I am Daniel Rikis, and welcome to Book One Hundred and One. Book One Hundred and One is all about the books that I read for the last forty years. And today I have my special guest. She is the author of several books, no other than Miss Brackett. Hello. <laughs> Happy to be here. Yes, and welcome to Book One Hundred and One, Miss Braca. And can you please introduce yourself? Okay. Let's see. I'm the author of forty-one children's books and one memoir for adults. Ah, uh, interesting, Miss Braca. So, what is that you realize that you are good in writing? <laughs> I would say、um, there was a poem that I wrote in third grade, and they read it in front of the school audience. And the poem was about how amazing books are—that when you read a book. You can go any place. You can go any place in time. You can go any place in space. It takes you anywhere you want to go. So、um, that was when I realized I was a writer. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome! So can you still remember that poem, the first paragraph, or the content of that poem? Can you share it to us? I I I don't know more than what I just told you because that's all I remember about it. It was about it was about like how you feel when you read a book that it transports you, and 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 that's what I love about writing books. So I remember in high school when I graduated, they voted me class author, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't think of myself that way, really. But then they knew more than I did because, yeah, I definitely, definitely have been an author, and I'm always writing more books. I love to write books. Yes, indeed. So, who are your favorite authors that influence you the most? Oh well, Dr. Seuss because I love Dr. Seuss. I loved his books as a child, and I still love them as an adult. They are books that seem so simple, but they're really deep too. And that's what my books are. I I, I tackle really deep topics, and I try to write them in the most simple way possible. So that anybody can understand them,、um, you know. I went to Harvard, so people would think someone that went to Harvard would write like a a, a really complex intellectual things. But no, I, I love simplicity. I love to take concepts and make them very clear and joyful, so that people can understand them as early as possible in life. Yes, indeed, Miss Brigger. So, who did support you in your writing? I know that my 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 sixth grade teacher really appreciated my creativity, and she really spurred me on in in elementary school. I remember her very well. But I'm also I'm going to mention my husband because I feel that. He gives me the space to be create as creative as I want to be, and he deals with stuff that I consider really boring, like taxes and paying bills. You know, so um, so I'm really happy that he lets me just like kind of soar in life, and he's okay with that. And um, so it, because he's like a grounded kind of person, it's very helpful for me in our life together. Definitely. So,、uh, Miss Braca, as a Harvard graduate, what did you learn from it? Oh, I had a blast at Harvard. It what one of the main things I learned is that, like, I was like 
I really was excited about going there. Like my parents were like, why would you want to do that? Like they weren't into me going to this big private school and all that. Like I was, I was brought up in this little apartment and it was like, not what they were thinking about for me, but I was, I figured if I want wisdom, I'll go to the place which must have the most wisdom and that would be Harvard. So I, when I was there, I, I felt like this is it. You've made it. Now this is like the tops. And I, I was keeping my eyes open, learning from everybody. But what I found is that the people there were also looking for more. It's not the it's not the be all and end all of life. And what I really discovered there from knowing like a lot of famous people mm -hmm. while I was there is that fame and wealth and power is not the secret to happiness in life. So that's something that I got to learn early. I thinking like most young people, I thought that's what, what where it was at, but I was blessed to discover early on that's that's not the secret to happiness. <laughs> yes, people, and thank you for uh, sharing to us that one, Miss Breika, and very well said. So, <laughs> You are writing uh, children's books as well as academic books. Tell us about it. Well, the only, I, I just wrote one book for adults, and that's my memoir. The memoir is, is very unusual because it's actual excerpts from my diaries from age 12. And then when I got older, I called it a journal and I wrote letters. It, it, it's the transformation from age 12 to 32. It's kind of a documentary because you mm -hmm. actually watch me, like how did I develop food addictions and how did I heal from the food addictions? So the book is called Nourish the Soul, Filling the Emptiness Within, because I feel what I discovered is that that's what addictions are about. Addictions are about trying to fill the emptiness inside, and it, it never works because externalities do not fill that hole. It's, it's, something, it's a spiritual hole, and the only thing that actually fills it is gratitude. Gratitude fills us up with, with the lasting pleasure that all of us are craving. Very well said, uh, Ms. Breika. So what is the big difference of writing children's books than a memoir? Oh, wow. Well, I am a person that doesn't like to write a lot of words. So my picture books are really short and to the point. And, and the book for adults, I, 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 I don't write books with a lot of words. So I just compiled it. I... I I took the entries that were the most significant from my diaries, and all I did was fill in the missing pieces of, of parts that were missing so you could see the entire thread going through life. And basically, in that sense, they're similar for me because I write succinctly with few words in order to get the message out to the world. That's really my goal with both my children's books and books for adults. So I'm not really writing a lot of books for adults because what I love is saying things as simply as possible. Ms. Breika, what are your long-term and short-term goals in writing? Well, I'm writing a lot more children's books. In fact, I just wrote one yesterday. I'm really excited about it. It's been on my mind for a while, and I finally had the time to do it. And I am also doing a lot of presentations. Um, I, I give them in person, and I do them online about gratitude, because I feel that what the world needs so much is joy. So I'm, I'm, I'm teaching about how to incorporate gratitude into everybody's life. Those are my long-term goals um, to make this um, just basically a more joyful planet. Definitely, people. So, Ms. Breka, are you in Israel right now? Yes, right now I'm in Israel. 
Yes, and I want to shout out to the people listening in Israel. Thank you so much, Israel, because in Tel Aviv, I got 42% audience share. Central District at 31%. South District at 15%. Haifa at 9%. And last but not the least, Jerusalem at 4%. Thank you, Israel, for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created in Power Riders all over the world, like Miss Brecca gets. Miss Brecca nourishes the soul, filling the emptiness within. How did you craft it? Well, I found my ancient diaries, you know, and when I discovered them, I sat there on the floor. I was like, oh my goodness, now I understand. It was when I started reading them that I could see the thread running through my life. And everybody has a thread running through their life. Understanding our own histories, it's its transformative. So it was really transformative for me. And I'm sharing the epiphany that I experienced from reading them with everybody else. The book has been really popular. And I'm really happy that people are relating to it, no matter what their story is. Everybody is a spiritual being in need of more gratitude in life because really that's our whole purpose for being here, which I did not know until later on in life. So I'm, I'm busy sharing this so that I share gratitude skills with even the youngest children so they don't have to play catch up in life like us. Why not learn the secret to happiness is in er as early in life as possible. Because um, that's really, then you have a much more enriching life. And there's so much of life, there's so much pain that is preventable when we understand how to live more, more joyfully and more gratefully. Yes, indeed. What inspired you to write? Nor is the soul filling the emptiness within. What, in, what inspired me was my own healing. And I know that so many other people are suffering with addictions. And I know that food addictions are probably the most common addiction there is. Um, and it's something that you can't just stop eating. You know, you can stop drinking, you can stop smoking, but you can't stop eating. And you have, you. so it's important to learn how can you get over a food addiction without giving up food, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes, definitely. And so I learned what, what we're really seeking is lasting pleasure. When a person starts overeating, they're overeating because they want the pleasure to keep lasting. That makes so much sense. But once we understand that what we're really craving is lasting pleasure, then I discovered, what I discovered is the pleasure ladder, which is based on ancient mystical wisdom. And it teaches so many other ways available to us every moment to fill our lives with lasting pleasure. There are five, yeah, there are five yes. rungs, five rungs to the pleasure ladder. And they seem to correspond in my view to our five fingers because it indicates we have the power in our own hands to bring pleasure into our lives at any moment. So the lowest level, this the five levels also correspond to the five levels of the human soul. The lowest level of the soul is the part that's attached to the, to the body. So it's all the things we experience with our senses, like um, being in nature, music, movement, all these things were designed to fill us with pleasure. When we move, when we dance, when we swim, doing yoga, gardening, it, it was designed to create pleasure in us. And we know that physiologically, it gets the endorphins flowing and it gets other happy chemicals moving. So basically, when we eat natural foods as well, the natural foods 
are designed to be delicious and nutritious, while junk is designed to be delicious and addictive. It's, it's not designed with infinite intelligence and infinite love for us to experience pleasure. So once we recognize this, the more natural foods we can bring into our lives, the more movement, the more being in nature, music, we, we all know that these are things that bring us pleasure, but now, now we can understand why. So that's the lowest level of pleasure. Do, do you want me to tell you about the other higher levels too? Yes, please. Okay. okay, great. So the next level up is love. So a person would say, well, love is dependent on somebody else. But in the ancient mystical wisdom, love is defined as focusing on the virtues of another. So any of us at any time can bring love into our lives just by focusing on the virtues of another. Like in prison, pretend a person's in prison, if they focused on like a kindness that a grandmother once did for them, they are elevated, they're inspired, they get that warm emotional feeling of love and they have brought it into their own lives. So higher than that and even more lasting pleasure is meaning doing something good and meaningful in the world um i was on another show and 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 the host said that he was feeling miserable and lonely and he had two slices of pizza and he was about to plow through the rest of the whole box of pizza by himself when there was a knock on his door and his neighbor needed his help for a couple of minutes. He helps his neighbor, he comes back, he doesn't want the pizza anymore. What, what changed? He, he filled up, he filled up with gratitude. He filled up that he was able to help somebody. That's, that's the case for all of us. So, even higher than doing something good and meaningful is doing something good and creative because then we take a unique part of ourselves and put it into the world. And, you know, when we're being creative, we don't feel like sleeping or eating and time is passing. We don't even know it. We're beyond time. That's how pleasurable it is to be creative. And the highest level of all is called transcendence. It's when we transcend even our own limitations. We, we make that first crack in a bad habit. We begin to break an addiction. Also, it's when we transcend the limitations, the, the, the barriers between us so that we can see that we're really all connected and we're all connected to the same source energy. We, we experience it like under a starry sky at night when we know we're part of a much greater universe. So all of those levels are available to us and there's only one price to pay to climb any ladder, of, on, on any rung on the pleasure ladder. And that price is gratitude. It's gratitude that helps us and fills us with lasting pleasure, which brings us connection. And this is how, because when we're in addiction, we feel estrangement, cut off, disconnection, loneliness, anxiety, disappointment, depression. And what does the pleasure ladder bring us? The connection and the pleasure that we've been craving. So that's this is available to anybody. It's actually, people can download a free copy of the pleasure ladder chart from my website. Um, you could put it on your, um, on your fridge, on your cabinet to remind yourself when you feel like overeating and know that there's, because we, we overeat from a sense of scarcity. There's not enough pleasure in my life. Instead, you will see now that your eyes are opened, that there's an, a 
abundance of ways to bring pleasure into your life, and you have the power to do it. Very well said, Ms. Braca. So what are the challenges that you face while you're writing this book? What are the challenges? Um, I don't know. I don't, I'm not that challenged because my outlook is that I have like a childlike kind of view of writing books. I just kind of play with them. I, I don't take it seriously. And I look at it as like um, a crossword puzzle or a puzzle that I'm completing. And I just fool around. I put one piece here. I try this piece. And um, I, I don't feel pressure to write the books. I just kind of write them when I feel now it's time for it to come into the world, you know? And then really what happens is I keep a pad and a pen by my bed. And oftentimes when I wake up in the morning, that's when the ideas are there. So I kind of just have to catch all the drops of rain falling down because I'm just a channel for the infinite wisdom that's available. And I, I see my role as just channeling channeling this wisdom into the world but it's not from me it's all from like the infinite source of intelligence how do you feel your personal experiences have shaped your writing um well they have tremendously because if i hadn't suffered from the food addictions i would not understand the pain of addiction so I'm grateful that I went through that. I'm also grateful to have healed from it because an addiction is like being in a prison and, and the walls get narrower and narrower and the behaviors get more and more bizarre because you're doing them secretly so nobody knows what you're doing. So other people are not aware of your suffering. And the amazing thing about the prison of addiction is that the we it's the locks are on the inside we have the key to open the 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 gate and get out of the prison but we don't realize it until we internalize the wisdom that can help to set us free interesting miss brecker how do you deal with the writer's block when you're writing, nor is the soul filling the emptiness of it I, I, I don't really have writer's block because I don't feel the pressure. You know, a writer's block comes from pressure and deadlines and things like that. But if you have a more playful attitude about it, it's really helpful. Um, I really encourage people. There are many people they tell me that they've had an idea for a children's book for like 20 years. And I tell them it takes 20 years and 20 minutes to write a picture book. You, 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 you walk around with it for 20 years, but it just takes 20 minutes to sit down, play with it, get it on paper, get a first draft, and then play with the first draft and edit it. And, and again, don't take it too seriously because the joy, the joy that you're experiencing when you're writing it, it comes through in your writing and the children can pick up the joy. So, so try to enjoy the whole process. Even once the book is written, that's just the beginning of the process. You have your whole life ahead of you to let people know about your book, the treasures that are in your books. Yes, indeed, uh, Ms. Brecker, nor is the soul feeling the emptiness within. If you want to go back and revise the book itself, which part of the book you want to revise? Oh, I just did that recently. Well, my book was published by um, a, pub a certain publisher, and I wanted to get the rights back to the book. They wanted to keep it because the book was doing really well. Um, but they let me get the book back and I was really grateful. And I changed the title of the book. Now, this was a major thing to do because I lost over 100 reviews on Amazon when I did that because it went with the old title. Mm -hmm. But 
I still did it because I, I have evolved during the time since the first book was published and I wanted a new title for the book. So that, that is the, a major revision that was just done recently. And I called it Nourish the Soul Now, Filling the Emptiness Within, because I think that really gets to the core message of the book. So even if nobody reads the book, they already have an important message just by reading the title. And I always encourage people, if you don't need the, to buy the book, if you don't have money to buy the book, you could get your public library to get it. That also gets the message out into the world because it's in public libraries and public libraries are happy to do that, to, to get the book to you. Yes, definitely. Yes, I agree that reading the title of your book, it is already amazing. Nor is the Thank soul. You. You. Is it the revision is worth it? Yeah, I, I'm happy about it. <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm really grateful to have the book back. And what happened is my children, I, I was going to traditional publishers up until now with my first 40 books. And now my children have actually taken over as the publishers. So they were really excited to get the book back. And now they have published it. And so... Yeah, they're moving ahead now with publishing my books here on out. I'm not going anymore to traditional publishers. So this is a whole new exciting venture that we're doing together. That'd be awesome, Ms. Brecker. So what are your daily writing routine like? Oh, um, do I write daily? Yeah, I probably write daily. I'm not always creating new books every day, <laughs> but... No, but I am sharing about my books online. I love doing that. And I want to tell the other authors out there that, you know, if you think of it as PR and it's like, and you could get really burned out promoting your books. Here is the way not to get burned out. Just think about it as sharing and revealing. That's really what you're doing. You're sharing and revealing the treasures in your books. And there's no way to get burned out if you only do what you enjoy to let people know about your books. I don't do things that I don't enjoy. Um, like, I don't stand by a table and try to sell my books. I do not enjoy doing things like that. Truthfully, I'm an introvert. So mm -hmm. I like being behind the screen. I also like giving presentations, but, but I don't like just standing and selling books. That's not my style. So my children do that, you know, but, um, <laughs> but I, yeah, but I, but, but find what you love to do and you'll never get burned out letting people know about your books because you'll always be enjoying yourself. Definitely, people. It's very well said, Ms. Braga. Can you share a memorable reader feedback or interaction that had a significant impact on you? Yes, sure. Um, some of my books for children are about the prevention of abuse. So um, I have heard from parents that told me how their children's lives were saved by reading my books. Um, I've also heard from children that told me they were being bullied. And by reading my books, they were able to become a happier person, face going to school again and have a more joyful life that the books have been really transformative. So I love hearing about this. I hear about I, like some of my books um, teach about um, how to have a more healthy life for children. Um, again, prevention of abuse, swimming safely, like basic health issues. Because again, all my books help children's souls to shine. But if having a healthy body is a really important part of letting your soul shine. So my books deal with both having a healthy body and having a healthy soul. Yes, indeed. So before we go on, Ms. Brega, I'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast, Food 101, our third season with Jeff Alessandro, one of the best 
executive chef in one of the best restaurants in downtown Toronto. And please do listen to our latest episode. We talk about Thanksgiving people because in Canada, we celebrate Thanksgiving on the 9th of October. You will know how to debone turkey, stuffing, and a lot more. Plus, one more. Our books are out. Not only one, but seven volumes and more volumes to come. Food 101, Volume 1 Basic is all about how to create a delicious food. And this will be on seven volumes, people. It's all, uh, it's all about, like I said, it's all about how to create a magnificent food available on Amazon and leading online bookstores worldwide. Miss Brega Norris, the soul feeling the emptiness within is a memoir why it's not an autobiography. Oh yeah. I mean it's an it could be, but it's just about twenty years. It's not my entire life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> why not the entire life, Miss Brecca? Okay, maybe there'll be another one, you know, who knows? <laughs> yes, definitely. Looking forward to it. <laughs> and probably it really helped these people to be a better in their food addiction. Yes, yes, thank God. Because, you know, people go on all kinds of diets and it's a yo-yo diet world where it just doesn't work. How long... Can people stay on restricted diets? But this is a life changer. Everybody can learn how to fill up on gratitude. It changes their lives completely when they recognize how they can bring pleasure into their lives that last. And so it's the best way to go. It's also, yeah, definitely living a more healthy life, eating more healthy foods, exercising. But why do these things work? Now we know. Why does volunteering work? These are all things people have heard that bring more happiness into your life. And now you can understand it actually nourishes your hungry soul. Yes. How has the publishing process been for you, Ms. Brecker? Well, originally, I would send, I mean, for for many years now, I've been sending my books out to traditional publishers, and they've been publishing my books. So the big change now is that my children have started taking back the books from the traditional publishers, and also publishing new books. Um, So from now on, uh, they're doing it themselves. And I'm kind of working for my children now. And they they are like really happy to be getting my messages out even further into the world. So it, it, it brings a lot of joy to me that they're really into um, sharing my messages even further. That'd be awesome. Miss Brega Norris, the soul feeling the emptiness within. What do you think the best highlight? Of my, of my book? I'll tell you one of my highlights. One of my biggest highlights is when I do in-person presentations. And the I do a lot in schools and with adults. And the questions that come from the audience is my highlight. It is so awesome interacting. Once I was at a high school and the girl asked me, what is the highlight, just like you did, what is the highlight of being an author? And I said, this moment, this is this moment when you're asking me a question like that. I love, love the interaction because usually a writer works alone most of the time. So when we do get to do presentations with people, it's an awesome experience to get the feedback from the audience and, and just to see the impact that your books are making on children and adults, it's, there's nothing like that feeling. Because when we help other souls to shine, it helps our own soul to shine. So, so it, it's selfish, too. We, we get to enjoy the pleasure when we help other people. Yes, very well said, Miss Breka, and thank you, listen notes, for my latest score of 26. 
and belong to 10% popular show globally. And Fitzpat, thank you for including my podcast on uh, the number seven art book podcast that you need to follow this 2023. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast. Please break a guest. Can you please invite our listeners to buy all your books? <laughs> if you want to, you if you want to, please visit the website. My children will be thrilled because they designed the website. It's um, www.getsbookshop.com. And Gets is spelled funny. G-O-E-T-Z. Sounds like goats, but it's gets. And it's G-O-E-T-Z. <laughs> but you know, G-O-E-T-Z. Uh, getsbookshop.com. And you can download the pleasure letter from there. You can see all my books. The the And uh, yeah, so I hope you'll visit. And of course, they're on Amazon. And they're in bookstores. And also... Um, like I was saying, you can find them in libraries. You could you could order them through your library, which is also a great way to read books. Yes, it's it, it's the greatest joy. It's I mean not the greatest joy, but it's a great joy. It's it's it, it's something to be very grateful for. Even now that we have so many ways to do things online, there is nothing like cozying up with a book. Just laying in bed, reading a book, it's its awesome. So um, your eyes don't get as tired as when you're online, you know, and, and you could take it with you. Reading is just such a personal pleasure. And especially with children, it's like a really intimate experience to share a picture book with a child. What's what's great about the picture books is the children want to hear them again and again. So that's why it is good to own a book so they can really get the concepts deep inside of them by rereading the books. Children tell me that they've memorized my books. I love hearing it. And they really internalize the the joyful concepts. Yes. Tips to nourish the soul. Tips to nourish the soul. That would be gratitude. So here's the thing. You know, six months after a person, God forbid, becomes paralyzed, or six months after a person wins a lottery, they are back at the same level of happiness they were at before those two major things happened. It doesn't change a person what happens to you. What, ha what changes a person's happiness level? Practicing gratitude. That if a person begins practicing gratitude, that changes their happiness level for, he for here on in, for the rest of your life. So much more than something major like that happening. So we have the power to change the level of happiness in our lives. Very well said. And, and in terms of eating, you can ask, when you feel like overeating, you ask yourself, is it my body that's hungry or my soul? Because right away, you know what it is. And when we feel like overeating, it's the top the top of the brainstem, it's the lowest part of the brain. It's feeling a sense of scarcity. I'm scared. I don't have enough pleasure in my life. I better keep just stuffing my face with whatever is giving me pleasure this minute. Instead, if you, then the neurons go up, up, up to the front of your brain and you ask the question, is it my body that's hungry or my soul? And all of a sudden, you don't feel that sense of scarcity and fear. You're asking a question now, and you recognize it's your soul that's hungry. And there are an infinite number of ways that you could fill your soul right this minute. The funny thing is, you don't even have to do anything. Just by thinking about the many ways that you could fill your soul right away, that big bag of potato chips, it stops calling your name. That, that whole container of ice cream, it doesn't have the same power over you. You take the power back. 
when you recognize that you can fill your life with lasting pleasure. Um, and, and another question I ask is, when you feel like overeating, if I eat 97 more spoonfuls of this ice cream, is that going to fill me up? Because you know it won't. After you finish the entire container of ice cream, you're even hungrier than you were before because you feel the emptiness even more. It didn't fill you. So the sooner we recognize that it's a spiritual hall that gratitude can fill, we can begin practicing it in the, over the most simple things in life that we're breathing, that, that so many parts of our body are working, that we have sunshine, that there's a breeze outside, that there's a tree. It, we all have so much to be grateful for. Yes, thank you, Miss. Breka for empowering us. Thank you so very much. It was a real pleasure to be here. Morgan people, see you soon.